first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 to 11. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to their house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake their ordinance of their God. They ask me of righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with, with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble your oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see them naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of the evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Our second scripture reading is from the book of Joel, chapter two, verses 12 and 13. Yet even now, says the Lord, return me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. The word of God for the people of God. So what is it that you and God need to get serious about? If you were here last week, you will remember that in a number of different ways as we talked about the discipline of fasting, I talked about fasting as one of those spiritual disciplines that we can use to help us get serious with God about something. And several times in the morning, I ask you to consider what it is that you and God need to get serious about. I don't know about you, but I've thought about that question a lot this week. Thought about it in relationship to my own life and just the whole question in general. You know, and what I realized was the fact that I think there's probably a few people who hear that question and would know immediately, oh, I've got this going on in my life, and yes, this is something that I need to get serious with God about. But I'm not sure that that's very many. I'm not sure that there's a lot of people who would fit into that category at any one time. I think a lot of you are like me. When you ask yourself that question, if you take the time to do it, God, what would you really like to get serious about with me and my life? You have a hard time coming up with a response. It's like, I don't know. 
Not only do I not know, but I'm not even very sure how to figure it out. I'm not sure how to go about thinking about what would I, what do I need to get really serious with God about in my life. I want to help us with that this morning a little bit as we think about this ongoing theme of fasting in our lives because I think a lot of us probably bring some misconceptions into that question that keep us from being able to move forward and be effective with a call to fasting in our lives. One of them is the fact that I think when we hear that question, a lot of times we could think, well, what's that one thing that I really need to focus my life on in relationship between me and God? What's the one thing that the preacher's talking about? Well, I don't know about you, but I know about my own life, and I happen to know that God's trying to grow me in a multiple different ways. God is a really great multitasker. I'm not, but God multitasks in my life all of the time. There are multiple areas in my life where God is trying to move me, nudge me, and grow me. And the truth of the matter is any of those would be an appropriate place for me and God to get serious and spend serious time together to help nurture in that process. So I'd like to move us away from thinking that it's just one thing out there they can be a part of that. I think there's a lot of things in most of our lives that would be worth the time and the energy and the effort to get serious with God about. I think another misconception may be that this has to be enormously profound, that this is some kind of earth-shaking understanding and revelation about myself and God and my role in the world, and it's probably not. Well, it might be, but it's probably not. At least, I don't think it is in my life. I think there are, again, a number of smaller, less significant things that God would like to use in my life to move me in significant ways, which could be profound, but in and of themselves, I, don't, I wouldn't see them that way. I wouldn't think about them that way. So given a couple of different parameters then and asking ourselves still the question, what do you need to get serious with God about? Let me ask you some questions. And I think any of the correct or any of the honest responses to these questions could very easily be something that you and God could spend some serious time around. The first one is, is there anything in your life that you're ashamed of? Is there anything in your life that you're ashamed of? Is there anything in your life that you fear people might learn or discover about you that you don't want them to know? Is there anything in your life that you try to hide from others, or that you try to hide from God, even though we know at one level we can't hide anything from God, but all of us try it, right? Is there anything in your life that you have trouble being fully transparent with God around? If you have any answer to any of those questions, then you've discovered something worthwhile to spend some serious time with God about. Because all of those things which we may be thinking of right now are things which Satan or the devil or evil uses to restrict us and control us, which helps us to live more a life of fear than a life of freedom, more a life of failure than a life of victory that we have those hidden agendas, those hidden things in our lives, and the worry about them, the apprehension over them, the fear of them, is just one way that we 
do not fully live the life that God intended us to live and created us to live. And taking any of those things to God in a focused and serious time of prayer would be a really important thing to do, and it would be really worthwhile. Another question could be, is there any temptation that you face that you always fail at? No matter how hard you try, no matter how determined you are, no matter how much you say, I'm not going to do that again, I'm not going to make that mistake again, that you can't get it done. That every time you try, it defeats you. It is, has victory over you and you cannot get victory over that. If you have anything like that in your life, if you can come up with anything that fits into that category, then friends, you've got something serious that you could spend time with you and God about. Something that could make a difference in your world and in your life. Now let me connect that to fasting for a moment. Because how does that fit together? Well, we've talked about fasting as a spiritual discipline that will help us get serious with God. But I want us to listen to those texts this morning, that wonderful text from the 58th chapter of Isaiah, which is the entitled, the subtitle, True Fasting. And then that great little two verses of text from Joel. What these verses do is they tell us the real purpose of fasting. And the real purpose of fasting is not learning to do without the real purpose of fasting is not restricting ourselves and narrowing our possibilities. The real purpose of fasting is transformation. People fast around a purpose, and that purpose is to experience some kind of transformation in your heart and in your life. Did you hear Isaiah as he was talking to the nation? Isaiah says, you think fasting is all about the doing of it. You think it's about the living without or the putting away. It's not. What is a real fast? A real fast is to live your life different. It's to do the things God calls you and wants you to do. A real fast is about helping you be a righteous person. A right person before God. And how does that happen? It happens in my life when God changes me inside, when God changes my heart. And God begins to work a work inside of Larry that makes Larry feel, see, act, talk, behave differently in my life and in my world. That's what fasting is about. That's what real fasting is about. We've been practicing it for a couple of weeks, just a little bit here and a little bit there. But folks, this week I want to challenge us not to practice it anymore. What I want to offer as a challenge for this week is for you and I to do a real fast, a true fast. And for a true fast, what you and I must do is to find that one thing out of all of the options that are out there, out of all the things in your life and mine, it doesn't have to be the most important or the least important. Just pick one. Just pick one. And to say, this week, this week, God, I fast around this in my life. I want a different heart around something. I want a different attitude around something. I want a different understanding of something in my world and in my life. And I proclaim a fast this week with that in my heart and yours. And I want that change to begin in my heart and in my life. And I want you to know I'm serious about it. As, as I proclaim a fast for it. So this week you're off easy in one respect 
because I'm not going to tell you what to fast. I'm not going to say we're fasting this or we're fasting that. And I know for the committee I met with, this is a little change from the program, but just flow with me here, okay? I want you to decide. I want you to decide what it is you are fasting, but more importantly, I want you to decide why. And this is why I'm fasting. Because this is the barrier I want to break. This is the temptation I want to get victory over. This is the fear I want to live without. This is the anxiety I want to move beyond. This is the discipline I want to put in my life that's not there. And this week I proclaim this fast so God and I begin to work on this in my life. I'm going to give you an example. It's mine. It's the only one I have. I learned something this last week as I fasted. I learned that I would rather play a game on my iPhone or my iPad than spend time in prayer than spend time reading my Bible. That's what Larry learned about Larry this week. I'm not real proud of that, but it's the truth. But I don't want to be that way. I don't want that to be true in my life. I'm not proud of that. I want that to change. And so this week I proclaim a fast. And I'm kind of mixing things up a little bit. But I proclaim a fast for God to begin to change my heart around that and to give me a new hunger around those disciplines in my life. One of the things that's true for me and my vocation is the fact my vocation is kind of God-centered. And sometimes when I want distance from my vocation, I confuse that with the fact that I also need distance from God. Well, that's not true. But I've slipped into that. And I want God to change that in my life. I want God to change that in my thinking. I want God to change that in my heart. That's what I'm going to do this week. What are you going to do? You don't have to do anything. Some of you won't. But I just want to tell you, this week coming up right now could be one of the most profound weeks of your life. It could be. It could start something new for you and your world that could last the rest of your life if you will take this seriously. Don't let that privilege, that honor, that opportunity slip you by. As we close this service today, you think about it. You think about your week coming up. You think about any of the responses to any of the things that we've talked about this morning. And before you leave here today, you decide with God what you're going to fast and why. And then hold to it. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious and loving God, if we could only really understand, God, how much you want this relationship with us. If we could only really get a handle, God, on how deeply you want to be invested in our hearts and in our lives, not because you want to control us, but because you want to free us to be everything you created us to be. Because you want us to live a life not okay, but a life of abundance. Help us to put our faith and trust in that this week, Lord. And to just decide on one thing, God, with you. Lay that on our hearts. And help us, Lord, to look to you. 
and spend time with you this week. And proclaim a fast to you that you could begin a work in our heart and in our lives. Almighty God, honor our prayers as we offer them to you. Speak deeply into our hearts and our lives. In your name we pray. Amen.